Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, in today's, or in this um, video, I'm going to be explaining the question from the Pure Mathematics 2 International A-Level textbook, the new textbook. And I'm going to be answering a question from exercise 5, which is about sequences and series. Page 101, question 4, which is actually about a recurrence relationship and a periodic sequence. So the sequence with the recurrence relationship UK plus 1 equals PUK plus Q, where U1 is equal to 5 and P is a constant and Q is equal to 13, is periodic with order 2, find the value of P. Okay, so what does this mean here, first of all? A recurrence relationship is one where you can find out what a term is from a previous or previous terms. Okay, so for example, this what it means is UK plus 1 means to get to a particular term, you're going to take the value of P, which is a constant, multiply it by UK, which is basically the term before the term you want. Okay, so the term you want, UK plus 1, all right, is equal to P times UK, which is a term before the term that you're looking for, plus the constant Q. Okay, so they told us P is a constant and Q is equal to 13. All right, so basically this they told us Q is 13, so we can just replace this with 13. And P is what we have to find. Now, they also told us it's periodic. But let's just, first of all, um, generate the first term. So U1 is equal to 5. And U2 is going to be P times U1. Okay, P times the term before U2. So P is a constant, which we have to find. So it's going to be P times 5 plus Q, which is 13. So we can say, therefore, that U2 is equal to 5P plus 13. Now, they've told us this is a periodic with order 2. So what periodic means is a, it's a sequence that repeats itself. Okay, And the order 2 tells you after how many terms it repeats. So basically, the first term is 5, and the second term is 5P plus 13. So you're going to have... The first term is 5, the second term is 5p plus 13, and the third term is also going to be 5, and the fourth term is also going to be 5p plus 13. And it's going to continue in this pattern. All the odd terms will be 5, all the even terms will be 5p plus 13. Now they want us to find out what the value of p is. All right, now. To find the value of P, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first express the third term in terms of the second term. Okay, so we know the second term is 5P plus 13. And we know the third term is going to be P times the second term plus Q from our recurrence relationship. So it's going to be P times the second term, which is 5P plus 13, plus Q, which they told us is 13. So if you um, expand that, you can say that the third term is equal to 5p squared plus 13p plus 13. And we also know the third term is equal to 5. So these two must equal each other. So we end up with a quadratic equation, which we can use to basically um, find the value of p, hopefully. So we've got 5p squared plus 13p plus 13 equals 5. So if we rearrange this, you get 5p squared plus 13p plus 13 minus 5, which is 8, equals 0. So we have here a quadratic equation, which you can solve. Let's try to see if we can factorize it. I'm going to use my window method. So you're going to have, um, over here, you're going to have 5p squared. Over here, you're going to have 8. Now, two numbers multiplied to give you, to give you 40. 5, 8 is 40. 40p 40 squared and add to give you 13. So the product is 40 and the sum is positive 13. So think of all the ways of getting 40. 40 times 1, 20 times 2. We've got nothing times 3 times 4. We have 15 times... Four, sorry, not 15 times 4. We got, uh, sorry, we got 15 times uh, nothing. 
20 times 2, we got uh, 5 times 8. 5 eighths of 40, that's right. So it's going to be 5p and 8p. Okay. So these are two numbers that multiply to give you 40p squared and add to give you 13p. Okay, so now we can take out the factor here. You got p and here you got 5p. p times 8 is 8p and 5p times 1 is 5p. Everything works out, that's right. So you end up with 5p plus 8 in one bracket and p plus 1 in the other bracket. So we have the answers either p is equal to negative 8 over 5 or p is equal to negative 1. Okay, so now it doesn't tell us that p is a an integer or it doesn't tell us anything this is a constant so according to the question as it is the answer could be either of those two okay it could be minus one or minus eight over five okay however this is the answer given in the back of the book which is minus one okay we're you know, there's nothing to prevent this being our answer the way the question is worded. Okay, so that's something that's a bit strange. Okay, um, so basically, what I did is, you know, I was a bit confused about this. Why have they only given this as the answer when it could also be, be, be minus 8 over 5? Maybe there's a mistake. Maybe they should have said p is an integer. Um, that, that would have fixed that problem if they said p is an integer. Okay, then minus one would be, you know, the only answer. Okay, um, and that would have been fine, but they don't mention that at all. Okay. All right. So what I did is I looked at what's called the um, the solution bank. Okay, and I wanted to just see what they, if, you know, just to see what the problem is here. Why have they? Sometimes they correct a question or you know in the solution bank uh, it's like uh, they, they update it all the time and if there's a problem then there's been a few problems in these books with the answers so um, I checked the solution bank and this is what I found okay this is no that's not the solution bank where's the solution bank it's over here it's over here yeah you see this is the question four it says un plus one equals p times un plus ten Okay, and then if you continue on using that as 10, we do exactly what we did. We'll have 5p squared plus 10p plus 5 equals 0. And you end up with p plus 1 squared equals 0. So p is equal to minus 1, which is the only solution. It's like a repeated root. So um, they obviously fix the question in the solution bank, but not in the book. Because in the book, it tells us that the value of q is 13. Okay, but here they've used the value of q as 10, which solves the problem of having more than one answer because you end up with a perfect square. Okay, so that's basically what's taken place here. In, I guess in the new editions of the book, they'll call this 10. If you call this 10, then it changes the question. You have 5p squared. Okay, you'll have 5p squared plus 10p okay plus 10 all right so you'll end up with 5p squared plus 10p plus 5 you'll end up with basically p is equal to minus 1 only because you'll have p plus 1 times p plus 1 equals 0 so basically um, that's you know a little clarification of this question because I was wondering why there was only one answer and you get two answers from the way the question is but in fact this should have been a 10, which would have made this a 10, which would have made this a 10, and this a 10, which would have made this 10p plus, okay, plus 10. All right, so you'll end up here with 5p squared plus, maybe that's smaller, wait a second, yeah, 5p squared plus 10p. And you'd have plus 10 equals 5. So you have 5p squared plus 10p. Plus 5. 
which you can then let me just move down here a bit which you can then um, divide by 5 so you have p squared plus 2p plus 1 equals 0 which will then give you p plus 1 times p plus 1 equals 0 so therefore p is equal to minus 1 you only have one solution one repeated root so you have p equals minus 1 and then that makes sense as that's the only answer otherwise that would also be a valid answer okay so i hope that was clear